Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I welcome you to Noble Quran Stories, and we continue bi idnillahi ta'ala the life and times of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abu al Anbiya, the father of the Anbiya. He is the one we make mention of in our tashahud. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. One of the five great major Anbiya, Ibrahim alayhi salam. So, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, what's the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the tyrants? Ibrahim engaging in dialogue with two tyrants. Well, let's see. The first tyrant that Ibrahim alayhi salam dialogues with is mentioned in Surah Al Baqarah, verse number 258. Alam have you not considered, have you not pondered over the individual, the criminal, the tyrant who dialogued with Ibrahim alayhi salam? He disputed with Ibrahim alayhi salam fi rabbihi with regards to Ibrahim alayhi salam's rabb an atahu Allahu al-mulk. Why did he dispute? Why is he having an argument, a quarrel with Ibrahim alayhi salam? Why? Because he has mulk, because he has position and authority and wealth. And so, instead of making shukr and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather he wants to compete with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, we need to be aware. We should not allow for our wealth and our property and kingdom and dominion to get the better of us. Don't be deluded. All of this will come and it will go. When you are entered into the grave, it is your actions which remain with you. As for your property, as for your wealth, your position, this will go back. This will not continue the journey with you. And so this tyrant, as some say, that this was Nimrud, as we will discuss. And so this tyrant, he feels that he has position and authority. And he competes with the Rabb of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. He says, what is this? No, no, no. You have have no other Rabb. I am your Rabb. I am your Lord. You should show servitude to me and obedience to me. إِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّيَ الَّذِي يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتُ قَالَ أَنَا أُحْيِي وَأُمِيتُ Ibrahim alayhi salam says to him that Allah is the one who gives life and Allah is the one who takes life. And remember, Ibrahim just came out of that fire and outwardly it should have been that Ibrahim alayhi salam was supposed to be dead. But Allah is the one who gives life and Allah is the one who takes life. It's not in the hands of any man. But this criminal, he says, no, I'm the one who gives life and I'm the one who takes life. And the story goes that he had two prisoners and he brought one of them and he says that you, you are set free. You are supposed to have been put to death. Well, you are now freed. You can go. And the other, he sentences the other to death. And he says, look, Ibrahim, I cause this man to live and I cause that man to, to die. I'm the one who gives life and I'm the one who causes death. Allahu Musta'an. So then Ibrahim alayhi salam basically closes the debate. What does he say? Qala Ibrahim fa inna Allah ya'ti bi shamsi min al-mashriq fa'ti biha min al-maghrib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes the sun to rise from the east. You cause it to rise from the west? Do so. If you can do that, let's see. And so obviously he was dumbfounded, as Allah mentions, فَبُهِتَ الَّذِي كَفَرْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ And so the disbeliever, the criminal, the zalim, he was dumbfounded, he was stumped, he had absolutely no answer whatsoever, and Allah does not guide those who are unjust. And it is said that this was King Nimrud, who was based in Mesopotamia, the king of Babylon. And there is a hadith which states that there were four mighty rulers, four great rulers, two were Muslims, Suleiman alayhi salam and Dhul Qarnain and two were not Muslim and one of them being Nimrud and the other was Nibukhta Nasr and he was a criminal, he was a tyrant, he was very, very violent, Allah Musta'an. And it is said that how did he meet his end? That a mosquito entered via his nasal passage and this caused him great pain until eventually he died. He suffered greatly and then eventually he died and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows best. So was this Nimrud? We don't really know, but this is what we find in many of the biblical narrations. We don't find a verse of the Quran stating it was Nimrud. We don't find a 
hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa stating it is Nimrud, but we do find certain narrations that allude to the fact that this was Nimrud, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. What we do know is that this tyrant here, this criminal, he was dumbfounded, he was stumped by the statement of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that you make the sun rise from the east, and obviously he was unable, Allah musta'an. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sarah, and his nephew by the name of Lut, they then migrated. They left this land and they moved on in their journey. And the story goes that they come to an area called Haran, or either this was in Egypt. And this is when Ibrahim alayhi salam now confronts the second tyrant. And this tyrant, it is said that he had a great appetite for women. And he was told that there's a traveler passing by and he's got a very, very beautiful wife. And this is obviously Sarah. And so he eventually sends out his men, henchmen, they arrest Ibrahim and they arrest Sarah. And when Ibrahim alayhi salam was asked, who is this? He didn't say, this is my wife. Rather, he said, this is my sister. So that the tyrant wouldn't kill Ibrahim alayhi salam. Had he said that, no, this is my wife, most likely the tyrant would have killed Ibrahim alayhi salam and then taken Sarah. So this is like the lesser of two evils. Rather, I say that you are my sister, sister meaning sister in religion that they are upon the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are upon Islam and so this is my sister in religion and then the criminal let Ibrahim alayhi salam go as for Sarah then she was taken by this criminal and subhanallah as this tyrant this criminal tried to lay his hands upon her tried to touch her suddenly his hand was paralyzed and he was unable to do so he tries a second third time he's unable and thus he realizes that there's something special about her he's thought maybe she is a magician maybe she is a soothsayer black magician etc and so he says get her out of here he says to his soldiers that you didn't bring me a human being rather you brought me a jinni you brought me a devil here get her out of here lets her go and also gifts to her a slave woman by the name of Hajar and so now Hajar Sarah and Ibrahim alayhi salam, they were set free and they move on, they continue their journey, walhamdulillah. Eventually we will learn that Sarah, she gifts this Hajar to Ibrahim alayhi salam and then Ibrahim alayhi salam has a son from her by the name of Ismail. Who is Ismail? Ismail is one of the great, great, great grandfathers of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. and then Ibrahim will leave Hajar and Ismail in my Later on, he will visit, they will build the Kaaba, etc. As we will discuss in the life and times of Ibrahim. What are some of the lessons that we can extract from this story, from this verse in the Noble Quran? Number one, don't be deluded by your wealth. Don't be deluded by your dominion and your kingdom and your car and your business, your position and your authority. All of this will come and all of this will go. You will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will stand there alone. So don't be deluded by all of these matters. Number two, we learned that Tawriya, Tawriya is like a white lie, that this is something which is permissible under dire circumstances. Ibrahim alayhi salam, there were three times when he had used Tawriya, when he said, Inni saqim, I am sick. Technically he was sick, but he was sick of all of the shirk and all of the idol worship. But the people thought that he meant he was physically sick. Number two, he said that the big one did so. The big one is the one who broke all of the other idols. And and the third one was here when he said, this is my sister. So sometimes maybe somebody's life is at stake, etc. That technically what they've understood is not what you meant. You meant something else, but they understood something else. We might call this a white lie. So under certain circumstances, this is allowed inshallah. And lastly, the most important lesson is that we do not lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam was in the fire. Hasbi Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah suffices for me as a protector. Allah is sufficient for me. Ibrahim alayhi salam with the first tyrant. Ibrahim alayhi salam with the second tyrant. Imagine Sarah. She's alone with this tyrant. The one with position and authority and guards, etc. But وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever fears Allah, 
Allah, Allah will make a way out for them. Walhamdulillah. And thus the criminal's hand was paralyzed and he was unable to interfere with her. And so never ever lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, until we meet again, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and keep us blessed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us yaqeen like Ibrahim alayhi salam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make a way out of our difficulties like he made a way out of the difficulty for Ibrahim and Sarah until we meet again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.